all of us. We're about to show you what my fucking room we're talking about. So sit back and keep relaxed and we got the clutch. Never kidding on the mic, yeah, we do that if you. And I got an old show that I thought you knew. We don't have some other say, yeah, we pay all the dudes. So sit back and take a room while we do it. Welcome into the Perpendicular Mouth. We're back. Violate near holes, defecating on the MIC. My name is Zach. His name to the writer left of me is realized. We go hard so you can keep it soft and silky, just like a velveteen rabbit. Oh, yeah. And we have a fantastic show for you today because we are going to determine the greatest adult animated cartoon comedy series of all time. The greatest doodle of all time. Why don't you shorten? I I went I went through painstaking efforts to do every single word right. in our topic. My, my mistake. The greatest adult animated cartoon nope. comedy series of all nope. time. Okay, but you know what? Stick with Doodle. All right, thank you everybody for joining us. As I said, we are going to determine the greatest Doodle of all time because why? We are the determinators. We are the determinators. And I think it's important that we make the distinction that we aren't including anime. That's not part of the doodles. We're not including uh, Disney cartoons. We're not including Pixar CG animation. We're specifically speaking on animated cartoon comedy series. That's what I said. That's right. <laughs> I agree. So we're going to cut it all down from the top. What we, we have a list of 20. And since I am not uh, very up to date on my adult animated cartoon comedy series, hmm. we're gonna change up the format just a little bit. But before we get to that, let's hear from today's sponsor of the show. And today's sponsor is very fancy. Hey, realize, you fancy, huh? Oh yeah. Oh, you should sip on Lakata. It's the new sparkling red wine hmm. from Ray on the Chef from the Wu-Tang Clan. Raekwon oh, the chef went to the kitchen and came up with this beautiful, sparkling Lambrusco Italian wine. It's a new height in luxury. Lakata wine. That, that looks amazing. That looks amazing. It looks beautiful. Uh, not to be confused with La Quinta, which is an inn and a motel next to the gas stations. Lakata La, La wine. Thank you, Raekwon. Wu-Tang is forever. And it's delicious. Oh, uh, Wu Tang is forever and delicious. Yeah, I'm, let me put this down. The greatest, the greatest doodle. I'm putting it on, on the screen for the people of all time. But I think it's important that we explain the uh, the format of the show, please. Because, because since since you're not up up to date and well versed on on your your adult animated cartoons, and because I can only assume that not everyone who's watching has seen every single show we're going to describe. The way we're going to put this show together is as if I am pitching the show concept to you. You are the studio head. You are the uh, executive producer. You are the, the network, the network person choosing what show is going to be put on. And I have 30 seconds to kind of give you the pitch for the concept of the show, at which point you can come back at me with, you know, what, three three questions that you think to kind of fill out the concept of the show to you. And at that point, you'll determine whether you want to go with that show or the uh, the former show. I, I think we should start with the gold standard. How about that? All right. That sounds good to me. Let me put 30 seconds on the clock and then you tell me when you are ready. Oh, OK. Well, well hold on one second. Let me get it down here. So those, those of you watching at home can know exactly which show I'm talking about and the way. You, you tell me when we're ready. Okay, and and I can't see the name. Even if you put it on the screen, I can't see it. So right, yeah. Everybody uh, thinks I'm lying. I'm not lying. So you got to tell me when I can start. I I said you let me know when you're ready, and I'll start the clock. Okay. All right. No, I'm ready when you are. You say you say go. You go or give it to me now. Say give it to me now. Give it to me now. Okay, so what this show is about is a nuclear family. And this show takes place in the 80s, the 80s going into the early 90s. Essentially, you got the, the single uh, or, or the single household income family. He actually works at a nuclear power plant. It's a stay-at-home mom. They have two and a half kids, literally. A, a son, a daughter, and about, you know, maybe fourth and fifth grade, fourth and third grade, something like that, and a baby. Uh, and essentially, we're going to use every single 
offensive racial stereotype out there. Oh, that's that is not enough time for you. Uh, let me ask you this: Are the characters uh, people of color? Um, yellow is a color. Or how about that? Are you okay with them being yellow? Yellow folks. I I would assume so. Uh, the last question I would have is: Can they have three fingers? Yeah, I was really uh, hoping to go with five fingers. Can, can we, we compromise on four fingers? I, yeah, we could do that. We could definitely do that. Very well. So, so what do you think? You, you want to? That's the first show. I like it. Let's book it. Okay. All right. So we're starting with that. So we got, we got. You know what that is, right? <laughs> it's the Simpsons, obviously. That's the one. Every, everybody knows the Simpsons. Okay. So we're starting there, and then from here. I'm going to start throwing. So, so now we have to basically determine if any show ever was as good as The Simpsons, or if any any show is uh, ridiculously better than The Simpsons. The question is now: Is 30 seconds enough time, or do you think I need a little more time to really? Uh, well, here's the question: Can you do it in 30 seconds? That's the real question. I was I was stumbling. I, I think I might need like give me 45. Give me 45 seconds. 45 seconds. Like I, I, can we compromise at 40? Okay, 40 40 seconds. You got you got forty seconds on the clock. All Are you right. ready? I'm ready. Give it to me now. Okay, this show is about like uh, prepubescent children. Okay, they're going through their adolescence. They're starting to get funny feelings in their bodies. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that with like we're going to anthropomorphize their their hormones. Okay, we're going to create uh, hormone monsters that are talking to them, making them do funny things. We're going to have pubic hair that talks and sing songs. We're going to have vaginas that talk to people in this. We're going to have all sorts of weird stuff going on. We're going to have a you know. Uh, uh, a, a creepy, a creepy teacher that you don't really know what his deal is or something like that. He's hanging out with the children, and, and the whole time they're like playing and singing and dancing. Uh, uh, but it's really just about like children's sexuality. Sorry, <laughs> oh, hang on a second. See what you're telling. The last thing you said it's really about children's sexuality. Starring the story. Starring so what you want is you want to put a show on the air that is all about sexualizing children and have talking pubic hair and a pedophilic teacher. You, I think you got it. Yeah, I, I'm going to pass on this. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, you, you know, do you know what show that, that is? Nick Curl. Is that Big Mouth? Big Mouth. I, I've heard of that. I have never watched an episode. I, I, man, I just nailed it. You don't even need to now. You know exactly what it's about. I, you know what? Uh, now I don't need to watch an episode. And I will play this. Because The Simpsons is definitely moving forward on that, too. Okay, there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, you let you let me know whenever you're ready for the next pitch. I'll throw it at you. Give it to me now. That, and actually, you know what? To save time, why don't we when we play the horn, you can just move right into it. I'll hit the I'll hit the the start as we go. Well, yeah, well give it to me now. I, I'm gonna need I'm gonna hold, 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 hold. I'm gonna oh, need, oh, what? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna need like a 15 second buffer because I gotta get the new title on the screen for the viewers. Just so they know, they know exactly what we're, we're oh, going. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll sit here and uh, I will uh, recite quotes from Talking Pubic Hair. Thank you, and 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 I'll say something to the effect of Shemal when, uh, when when I'm ready for you to give it to me. Okay. Okay. All yeah, right. I wish I wish I had a merkin that I could use as a puppet. Fair. Shemal. Oh, is that for me? I was gonna sip some Lakata wine mm -hmm. oh, by oh. Raekwon the chef. Mm. How about this? I'll ring the bell when I'm ready to roll. All right. And that can be when the time starts. Give it to me now. All right. So uh, this is essentially about like two stoner slacker kids, okay? Poor, just in the middle of nowhere. And all they do is they're like really dumb. They're just like listening to music videos all day long and getting into like shenanigans and pranks and all sorts of wildness. And they're just out there, uh, you know, they, they could be anybody, but they're they're just uh, kind of losers, slackers and mischief makers. And, and, and it's just really kind of commentary on, on the music that's going on uh, during the time. And, and then them just sort of getting, getting wild out there and being dummies. And there's this girl, Daria, who, who's like, she's really smart. She hates them. That's that's pretty much all it's about. Mm. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot to that if you can't even get to 40 seconds. And it sounded like you went to a whole different cartoon there at the end. Well, they have a, a there's a like a minor character involved in the show. She just like she hangs out. She hangs out with them, you know. Does she's she like, really? Is she's she, a, Daria's yeah. a character on that show? That's yeah, that's where she came from. 
Hmm. Not not to mention, little less known fact, their neighbor is Hank Hill. Yeah, there's a there's a crazy southern man that lives there as well. Yeah, yeah. It's not the actual Hank Hill. It's like a rudimentary Hank Hill. He's like Hank yeah. Hill, uh, older it's older the brother. The progenitor of Hank the Hill. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, this is Beavis and Butthead. I like Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, and, but uh, it's I think it's a great idea for a show too. You get like two young kids doing crazy things, and you know, um, very unique, very good for its time. Um, am I supposed to decide whether it's better than The Simpsons? No, see, because here's the thing: you got to look at it as if you you just just based off the concept. You're, you because the concept. Well, then, right. yeah, that has a concept to, to be like a lot, a lot more conflict. You know, you get two crazy kids doing crazy things. It, it's gonna you know, it's gonna create a lot of tension and a lot of problems. More than an entire family and interacting with their neighborhood. If you're like, a family, that, that's that's every single show on television. It's boring. If you like two kids getting into wacky adventures, wait till I pitch you four kids doing it. Well, uh, are we okay? I guess we're settled on that. Let me uh, let me do this real quick. Okay, now I got to sit for fifteen seconds, and uh, you ring your bell, and you let me know when you're ready. I, I'm going to drink this. Delicious Licata wine made by Raekwon the chef. I'm not a delicious even... sparkling Lambrusco wine from Italy. Brother, I don't even know which one won. Which which show are you going with of the two concepts? I told you Beavis and Butthead is a better better concept. Okay, all right. You two young it. kids running around getting into hijinks. Okay, okay. So so we're we're putting this is uh this is Beavis and Butthead. Shows need conflicts. A nuclear family with two and a half kids uh, that are yellow. Is uh is boring. It's like every other show. Except it was kind of the first. It was the first adult animated show. Like everything mm -hmm. else. Kind of but how, how many shows could you could you say? Oh yeah, it's a nuclear family with two kids, or three kids, a dog, and a cat. That's okay. every single. That's every single sitcom that was ever made in the nineties. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So so uh, whenever you're ready. Oh, I gotta turn on. Hang on I, gotta, I gotta turn on my thing, right? All right, give it to me now. Okay, so this show is essentially uh, Johnny Quest. It's a it's a mock of Johnny Quest. It's it's a comedy. Uh, we're gonna have you know them getting into wacky adventures. There's gonna be like a, a bunch of evil villain type people going in and interacting with them, and, and and they're fighting this family. But it's more about the two children, the two sons, and and they're getting into their own little shenanigans. But but their dad is like a crazy scientist, and they got like a, a, a big old bodyguard guy, and he's always like having to fight off evil. And they got like all these weird, wacky villains that are always going to be attacking them, and and uh, you know really raining chaos on their family. And the dad is sort of like stumbling through it all, uh, and, and, and the whole time. Yeah, that's that's that. Uh, you used Johnny Quest as a, I, I vaguely know Johnny Quest. I assume he was a, he was like a young guy, who like went on quests, right? Yeah. And his name was Johnny. Okay. And, uh, there's a lot of villains and you, things that you said are, that are going to be attacking them, but where, how do you set up these villains? Who are these villains? Um, they're, they're just kind of like, think of like, Characters in the sense of like a, a 007 type thing, you know, they're just these these different or or like Marvel Marvel uh, super villains, and they're just on the peripheral. They're always like trying to get into it, but but they have all got a twist. Like there can be a lady, but she's got a man voice, you see. And there's a, a a guy called the Monarch, and he's got like giant butterfly wings, but he's like you know like his, his main nemesis, but he's kind of ridiculous. So they, so they go on quests, right? So so they have like something like they need to get the crystal skull and then they run into these villains. Is that what no. it is? No, they, 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 they really don't do anything. So okay. it's not, a, so it's not a quest thing. These villains just come and hang out. These villains are just like causing chaos. Okay. chaos. If, if you have them go on quests, mm. then I'm in. There will be occasional quests. Can we have them go on quests? Sometimes there will be occasional quests involved. All right. All right. I think I like that one. All right. Okay. So there we go. And I have no idea what show that is. That's. Can oh, you tell me after that? That's that's a show called The Venture Brothers. You ever oh, heard I've heard of them. They were on Adult Swim. I never watched it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty pretty funny. They also had like a. a, a I don't know if it's a, an offensive Indian character, but like they had their their Haji type character on the peripheral that was like kind of there and their friend. 
but they never went on quests. That seems like they were, they rarely went on. That seems like kind of the point is that every week they should have like a new quest, right? It, it, it would make sense. It would make sense. But, uh, but yeah, no, it wasn't, wasn't really, it was just like, you know, I think it's part of the, the humor of it. Is there like, if only know, I was a showrunner. Huh? Man. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, I, I am just about ready. You want me to just ring the bell when? Uh, no, I just, I just, just tell him I'm ready. Okay. All right. I'm ready to go when you are. Keep okay. Coming okay. So this is about a cat and a dog. The dog is a uh, a chihuahua. The cat is like this big, fat, dumb, red, lazy cat. Just and it's filthy. This show's gonna be filthy. It's gonna be centered around just like eating kitty litter and like there's gonna be a lot of like close up butt shots and stuff and uh, a, lot, a lot of like weird innuendos and stuff for adults, but we're gonna let children watch it. We're gonna act like it's for kids, but it's gonna be fully inappropriate and like gross out stuff, like a lot of pimple popping and and just like really, really disgusting things. Um, and some songs, silly songs sometimes. You did not have me until the songs. Hmm. Uh, can there be songs about a log? If, if you want a song about a log, we can make songs about logs. Yeah. You, you right. uh, this show sounds terrible. I'm going to be honest with you. Show yeah. sounds absolutely awful. Yeah. There's no way in hell I would green light it. And you can take your ass back to Nickelodeon where you belong. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, so we're just going to say no to Ren and Stimpy. Now that said, I enjoyed Ren and Stimpy, but I did not like the close up. I, I never got like the whole close up thing where they did like the like the animation, like you know, like the boogers and the butt shots and stuff, like where they did like the. I I, I didn't understand that, but I guess people really loved that, and that was part of the part of the allure of the show. Yeah, S speaking of of close ups of boogers and butt shots, we got one of the perps in the uh, comment thread right now saying there's some whores in this house. Oh. So, yeah. Then uh yeah then they got to send those butt shots in the house. All right. That's All all right, I think I think they wanted to see your butt, but okay. No, uh, what Instagram's for I don't know. I don't, I'm not on Instagram. You can go go take your shit to Instagram and show your butt, you whores. All right, I'm ready when you are. Oh, okay. Well, I'll give it to me now. Okay, so this one is about uh, a, a a big yellow sea sponge. Now I know what you <laughs> when I say a sea sponge. You're probably picturing like an actual sea. No, I'm talking about just like a square sponge like you would clean your dishes with and he's gonna be underground he's gonna live in a pineapple and he's gonna hang out with a starfish and uh their their annoying neighbor is gonna be a squid and they're gonna work at a hamburger stand uh run by a crab making uh hamburgers out of crab meat called crabby patties uh and they're just gonna get into shenanigans pretty much they're just gonna get into shenanigans and hijinks um well, shenanigans and hijinks are great, but where are they going to come from? What's going to create the tension in the show? Yeah. Just general chaos. Like like the neighbor, the squid neighbor is really just going to be like, you know, super uptight. And and uh, let's call him Bob. Our main character, Bob, is is just like, wanna, wants to have fun. Wants to have a good time. His, his dumb, his dumb uh, starfish friend is like always just sort of making mistakes. And they get into wacky misadventures. That's pretty much it. Wacky misadventures are, are okay. And I like the under the sea, the enchantment under the sea theme. That's great and clever. And it'd be great for kids. I don't know how it's going to play for adults. Hmm. You know, those stoners, stoners will love it. Yeah, but stoners love fucking anything, literally. Hmm. Okay. Touche. Well, we're, we're still I have no idea what show that was. Yeah, we're back Venture Brothers. You're sticking with Venture Brothers, then, huh? Yeah, it's, it's it's great. They go on quests, and there's villains. That that sounds like a lot of a lot of uh, opportunity to to be good. Okay, no, fair enough. It, it, it creates new tension every week. Okay, well, if uh, if you like that idea, wait until I give you this next one. Give it to me now. Do you like 007? Because if you like 007, you're gonna love this concept. Essentially, it's 007, but it's a cartoon. All right, let me stop. It's, oh, a is there more? Okay. it's a comedy. 
Oh, well, that was worth it. Okay. Uh, no, because that's really thin. Hmm. Like, it's 007. Like, what's what's the what's the main character's motivation here? What are they trying to accomplish? I I, I don't know. Are they a spy? Yeah. He's okay. So so every week they get orders from somebody to go do something. Maybe he's like this super spy. He's like suave and debonair, but he's like you know he's got he's got like some boundary issues or some things. And uh, and does he uh, go on missions? Oh, there's missions. Okay. There are missions, many missions. Okay, and crazy villains. Oh, yeah. Well, not as crazy as the Venture Brothers. Honestly, I don't think it's as crazy. It's it's a different thing. It's it's a comedy 007. Venture Brothers is a a spoof Johnny Quest. And that's all I got. I never okay. watched the show. Okay, so so this is this is basically just a parody of 007. Maybe he gets his martinis, uh, or he 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 gets uh, not martinis. He gets a uh, uh, scotch and soda shaken. Maybe, and it'll be voiced by the same guy that uh, is Bob in Bob's Burgers. How about that? Oh, this is Archer. I've never watched that. I don't know anything about it. Uh, that sounds interesting because, but it sounds basically the same as the Venture Brothers. Why? Here's what's going to determine: Why is it better or different to the Venture Brothers? It's different because it's one guy, and it's not better because it isn't. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stick with the Venture Brothers because there's two of them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Quite as good. I, I mean, yeah, I get it, but if there's less fun villains and the same amounts of quests yeah. or missions, then all right, you know, it, whatever. It's it's voiced by the uh, what is yeah, John John Benjamin? He's very funny. Is he is he the voice of Arby's now instead of uh, yeah? He does the Arby's sandwiches too. He, he took the the gig over from Ving Rains. Uh, no, they 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 have that too. Like they have they have like different commercials. It's like Geico where they have like different. Different uh, ad worlds going on. Wait a minute. Can they do that? Uh, apparently. That Geico is. has like four different ads going on. Or is, is it progressive? I don't remember. No, I don't Geico know. has the Gecko. Progressive has flow. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to. I'll you have know what? Actually, they both do, don't they? Geico has all kinds of stuff. Anyways. I'll just have to, I'll have to take your word. But uh, I'm ready when you are. Okay. This is a, a show about science, okay? It's about a crazy uh, scientist grandpa. He's an alcoholic. He's nuts. And his grandson and him go on all these misadventures through space and time. They live with the family, the mom, the dad, and an older sister who are fairly normal. I mean, they got their own kind of thing going on. But it's really about the grandpa and the grandson. And like I said, they're going into outer space. They're going into all sorts of wacky adventures. They're getting microscopic. They're, they're anything you can imagine. They can do anything because the grandpa can make anything happen. And here's the twist. Grandson might be a clone of the grandpa. We don't know yet. Okay. Uh, well, now i got to stop the clock. Uh, it sounds like Back to the Future. Is this a ripped, rip off of Back to the Future? There, there are some Back to the Future vibes underneath, but it's so much more. You can, it, it's a show where anything can happen. But like when you were saying, what are are the uh, the the quests that that uh, Venture Brothers go on? This and and I said, you know, they do sometimes, but somebody don't. This one, every quest, all the yeah. quests, and they can go through time and space and all that kind of stuff. So they can have weird. Weird it, stuff through different time periods and that kind of stuff. Interdimensional. Right? It's it's all all the things. Okay. Uh, here's the problem. It sounds good, mm -hmm. but I've seen Rick and Morty. I saw like three episodes because everybody told me that it was the best show and it's the, so great and you got to watch it. And it's not very good. It's not funny. Well, well, here, here here's what what's it? Like, where, where's the funny going to come from? How how many episodes did you see? Like two. Maybe. Okay. I don't Maybe. even know if I saw the whole episode. Right. And, and, no, and no, no, no. I, I saw at least one full episode because I said I got to sit down and watch the whole thing because maybe I'm just not getting it. No, you, you, you would have to watch at least an entire season 
to to get it because you can watch like this last season had maybe 10 episodes and no two episodes were alike at all so you might just tune into an episode you didn't like but why would why would it be good to have a television series that you have to watch an entire season just to understand what's happening? Well, hold on. I didn't say you have to watch the entire season. Did you watch the very first and very second episode? No. Okay, so then you 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 just turned to the middle of a book and expected because, what because was the pilots are always the best? No, no, but because you're saying you didn't understand what was going on, like you you didn't get any of the buildup. Like this is this is uh, so this is an unfolding linear story that continues from episode one to episode. It's building. They're they're fleshing out the universe. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 that's that part of what oh, makes right, it good. Right. Is really. each episode independent of the other, or does do they build upon one another? So Every each season keeps building. It keeps building, and every episode is standalone in terms of the adventure, but every season is building upon what's already happened into the grander narrative. Mm. I don't know. I like the potential, but I don't. All right. I'll do it. I'll green light it if I can write it. See, and that's that's what I'm saying. You got to look at it like this, too. Don't think about the actual cartoons because when I'm when I'm pitching you an idea and you haven't seen the cartoon at all, eh, it's hard to it's, yeah, it's it's hard to just bifurcate. But uh, yeah, but the the con the concept is good, right? And you so, never you know, still, green light. but but and that's why I say I'm gonna green light it because because it has a good uh good potential. And you and, and you said you never saw Venture Brothers in the first place. You might have watched you know 20 minutes of a Venture Brothers and sort of been like, fuck this. <laughs> you know, so no, you're, no, I never watch them. That's what I'm saying. You you literally just have to 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 play by the same rules. These cartoons don't exist. I'm just pitching you concepts, and you have to decide what you think is a better concept that you can flesh out to to your liking. Yeah, that I can write it and make yeah. it better. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll make it funny. You know what? Uh, I'm going to cast Christopher Lloyd as the grandpa. All oh, right, and then fine. Uh, yeah, and uh, Michael J. Fox is the son. And uh, we'll make it work. Yeah, might be some issues with with Michael J. Fox, but uh, I'm no, he's fine. Okay, his right. voice over work, bro. Right on. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm ready for the next one when you are. Oh, I forgot about the timer. Hang on. Timerlicious. Come on, give it to me. Okay, so uh, remember that that peripheral character I told you about on that that show about the two slacker kids. <laughs> This is show that's following her. So essentially, she's like this really kind of like uh, emo, uh, maybe kind of like goth girl, really angsty. Okay, she's smarter than than all the other kids in her high school. She's a loner. She doesn't really fit in. She 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 deals with all these kids like the 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 two the two boys from the other show I was pitching you, and they're they're dumb. And and, and uh, we could probably get Janine Garofalo. To, to to voice the character. Oh man, you had me a Janine Garofalo. <laughs> really? Are you uh, a big Garofalo head? Huh? You're a big Garofalo head? No, oh, she's fine. Yeah, she's good. She was funny in the nineties. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I did not know that uh that, that was a peripheral character from the other show, from a different show, and that it was a spin-off. Uh spin-offs rarely work, but I can see that this could have niche potential that there could be a certain subset of the angsty teenage girl that really gets into it. That, mm -hmm. you know, the the, uh, the non-popular high school crowd uh, could identify. But it also sounds like she's even further identifying herself as like specifically like goth or emo, which could even more narrow the audience. Uh, I don't think it has the mass appeal that I need as the head of executive of something that I do that and I'm going to go with the other show. Okay. So so it's it's not getting picked up by uh by TPM. So no. you, you've right. heard of TBS, you've heard of TNT mm -hmm. for TPM. That's right. This our, our TPM Sunday Night Atlanta. Okay. All right. Uh well if if uh if, if you thought that was something, wait till wait till you hear this. 
You're with Jim Okay, so um, this show is about the black experience. It it's uh it's really going to 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 delve deep into both societal issues, historical issues, um, deep seated psychological and and uh, problems within the community and, and all sorts of issues. And it's going to be told through the eyes of a really, really intelligent, young, black, like fourth grader and his uh, third grade or even younger brother who wants to be like gangster and hardcore because that's what he's being told he needs to be. Sounds like a good concept. Sounds timely. But will it play in Toledo? In in certain parts, for sure. It also doesn't sound like a comedy. It, it, like it, is this is this is this dealing with? Uh, obviously, I'm not qualified to <laughs> to determine what you know what. But is is this more like blackish, or is this more like like where where it kind of plays? plays on that but then keeps it light and then delves into a serious topic for a moment and then moves on it, it's based off of a very popular uh sunday morning comic series Is so boondocks yeah so oh okay so so it's, was that a comedy a, a, a dramedy i mean it, you know it, it was it was a comedy it's a dark comedy no pun intended uh well since we were discussing comedies I'm going to say probably not because I don't know how funny the premise is. It sounds great, like an interesting show. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how funny that would be if you have to talk about serious issues, well, especially related to especially related to race and racial tension and, and the black experience. Okay, and that's fair. And, and, and since we're, we're classifying these doodles as, uh, what do we say? Animated comedy series. Animated comedy series. Okay, fine. All right, let's see what uh, we got next over here. Would you like me to vamp? I mean, generally, yeah. So yeah, ta -ta -ta -ta, yeah ta -ta 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 -ta. Perfect, and then once I hit the bell, I'm pretty much ready to go, okay? <laughs> All, right. All right, so this one is the future the future of 2021, okay? And uh, in this future of 2021, there's like an under the ocean laboratory. And in this under the ocean laboratory, they're just like uh, hijinks. Comedic hijinks are taking place down there with the various scientists and, uh, you know, uh, uh, naval, squadrons that that live under there and they're just sort of messing around and having fun and then get into wacky misadventures it's all mm -hmm. uh the first question when you say navel do you mean belly button sometimes sometimes sure sure uh, naval misadventures so i mean do the misadventures come from them being under the sea or in a science laboratory, like what's what's the oh, yeah. uh, what's the complex here? I think I think you you're getting it perfectly. Yes. So all of the comedy comes from oh we're under the sea oh boy I hope the water doesn't come in and make us into fish people. Well, I mean I don't know if, if they're got to be turning into fish people, but you right. know. I, I guess fish belly buttons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You you, you get it. Okay, I'm gonna pass. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. That, what what that, show is that? That show isn't great. That's a show called C Lab 2021. C Lab 20. Oh, so it literally was set in 2021. Yeah, that's yeah. when was it actually made? Uh, I want to say it was one of the earlier Adult Swim shows. So, so like early 2000s, the kind of thing. Probably. So that was like the, the distant future. Yeah. Oh, no. 
It was the near future. I mean, twenty years. Well, twenty years is kind of the distant future. Like, you know, you know, Blade. Like, we have no idea what's going to happen in twenty forty one. I'm pretty sure Blade Runner takes place in the twenty forties. That's where I think it's set. I think it's set in the 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 distant future of twenty forty. Back Blade. to the Future was two thousand fifteen. It's you know yeah. the distant future. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't you don't know what twenty thirty years are going to bring. We have yeah. no idea. Look back at nineteen nineteen uh, ninety. Look, I don't want to fight with you. I don't like want smartphones. Come on, man. They're flying cars by now, right? Uh, I wonder if we're getting close. That's a show for another flying day. Cars? Didn't we do the greatest future tech of all time? I think we did that once. Um, okay. maybe hoverboards. I remember. I remember debating. Sounds, like, sounds like something we do. Yeah, that's all right. Well, I'm ready. Oh, okay. well, now I got now I got to do my thing because we, we talked about hoverboards for two minutes. Yeah, well, shoot. Uh, all right, I'll give it to me. Okay, so this one you got like this, this weird kid. I don't know if they're in like a dream world, maybe, but like the main character, he's got barriers, but I think he's a human, and I think he wears like underwear on his head. Why? Why not? He's got like a wooden sword. He hangs out with like a little little yellow anthropomorphized dog, and they're literally just going on adventures. And it might be in the land of make believe or the land of dreams, and. uh it's just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy time. You know, there's any, anything can happen. Is it funny? Maybe, you know, you want it to be sure. How about that? So what, what, what you're pitching, what you're pitching is a, sh is a comedy show that may or may not be funny. Yeah, but it's for kids. So well, they, you did it's for adults. Oh yeah, then this show shouldn't. Should. <laughs> so literally, like the opposite. I was gonna say this has a lot of potential. It's very clever, and in the land of like dreams and make, you could literally do anything. It's it's the same thing. It opens up the whole universe. No, and, and that makes sense. And I think it's part part of why I included it. But I never watched this show because what is, what is the show? Adventure Time. Adventure Time. Yeah, yeah. I never I never watched. It's a Nickelodeon show. I think it is for kids. I think Zoomers. Kind of got into it. It, it might have been out around the same time as SpongeBob, or just like thereafter. But I feel like it was for like, like I was too old to be watching Adventure Time when it came out. Like, did it come out in two thousand or, or around there? Which, which is actually bullshit because that's when like Powder Powder Puff Girls came out or Powerpuff Girls, and I was definitely watching that. But, 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 I, but I guess, but I guess we're this is a, a talk about the concept. Mm. Are we doing this one as a concept? Because as a concept, it could work. Like, you know, a, a, a person that cruises around with underwear on their head and with an anthropomorphic talking dog and going through make-believe and dreams. You can do anything you want. It sounds fun. It sounds like a lot of wacky things. We could, Yeah. Hey, man, that's what I'm telling you. I'm just trying to sell you, sell you on concepts right now. So, you know, if you think, you think that this show has more legs, potentially, than well, uh, Rick and Morty, here, here's what I say. It, it could, but the underwear on his head with the with the uh, the wooden sword probably uh, brings it down a notch as far as uh, relatability. So maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll stick with the uh, the science the science duo. Okay. All right. Well, I think I'm I'm ready to go on this next one when you are. So if you just have your clock ready, you don't even have to tell me to give it to you now. When you hear the bell, I'm gonna start my spiel. All right. Okay, so uh, this one is about three lab-created sisters. Now, they're not actual sisters, and they can all even look different, but a scientist is going to create them, and they're going to be like uh, superheroes. They're going to fight crime. They're going to have different powers. Like, one can be really strong. Uh, another one can have, like, laser vision or something. Another one could, like, who knows? She could, like, blow, uh, like, Superman breath, you know, really cold wind or something like that. They can all fly. But, but it's more about their enemies, okay? In, in the vein of like true superhero shows. So we're gonna have like a little monkey with like a, a, a glass thing on its head and its brain showing and like. All right, so superhero show, female superhero, I like that. We need female superheroes, right? Girl, girls, little girls are gonna be the superheroes. Oh, little girls? That's right. No, that's not gonna work. I'll, uh, I'm gonna go with the previous one. What what what, what show is that? You, you don't like the idea of little girl superheroes, huh? 
little is this what is this powerpuff girls that's right how, how is that an adult animated comedy series all right well fine the only reason i even included it in there is because uh once we, we got to talking about adventure time i was like i wouldn't watch any cartoons that came out in 2000 and then i was like wait a minute i absolutely watched powerpuff girls so i just slid that one in under the radar uh well yeah. I, that's an inter that's an interesting show that like like you know female superheroes fighting crime being funny that's good that's we need more of that but little girls doesn't do anything for for society let's move on all right then fine all right uh okay so this is actually going to be a vehicle for bill burr i don't know if you're a bill burr fan but this is kind of going to be loosely based around his own childhood so we're in the 70s. It's about a little redhead boy. And he's like, you know, picked on by all the neighbors. He's kind of like, you know, got a, a verbally abusive dad and an emotionally distant mom. He's got an older brother that's going to like pick on him. And it's kind of a slacker and doing bad in school. And um, it might be a sister in there. I don't remember. But he's got his little friends in the neighborhood. Really like true to the date as far as like they're riding their bikes or listening to 70s music. They got a coked out neighbor that works at the radio station. Uh, all right uh he's a stand-up comedian so this is like a stand-up comedian with an animated bio series loosely based for sure loosely based we're gonna do a beginning middle and an end so we won't go any longer. okay it's, and it's a period piece sets in the 1970s early 70s early 70s cartoon and specifically limited to four or five seasons that time is yeah. there a lot of demand for 70s nostalgia these days? Probably not. I mean, I, I think if we're going to get into anything, it's probably more about 90s right now. Like the only, thing, the only thing I think of from the 70s is disco. Mm -hmm. See, right? this, this is in disco era 70s as much as it's like a butt rock era 70s. So think, think more uh, dazed and confused. And less uh, Saturday Night Fever. Okay, so so th this is more like Stoner '70s, Daisy Confused. Um, okay, uh, well, I mean, blue collar, hard drinking, uh, abusive, emotionally and physically. That does not sound funny. But I mean, now, now you're getting into serious, serious issues again. Yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be wedged in there for sure. Listen. If I if I want an animated comedy series, I want hmm. wacky misadventures. Okay. Are there any wacky misadventures here? It's not so wacky. It's not it's not really wacky. Are there misadventures? They're just sort of storylines. It's not really this this is this is the Wonder Years animated. Kind of. Yeah. No. Okay. I, I've seen it. And you know what? Winnie Cooper was better. Dude, did I ever tell you that uh, when I was in, uh, I guess I would have been my second year of, of my freshman year, my sophomore year, and going into my junior. So predom predominantly my sophomore year of high school, uh, I was living in Brentwood and in our apartment building where some, uh, a couple girls that were going to UCLA. And I guess at the same time, the actress that played Winnie Cooper was going to UCLA and she was like good friends with one of my neighbors. So she would just hang out at our pool in her bikini. <laughs> For a 15 year old boy, that is. Yeah. Winnie Cooper. The Winnie, Cooper. Winnie Cooper would just hang out and sunbathe and, and, and where our apartment was the, the, we had a glass window that just like overlooked the uh, the pool area, so you know, she was she was sun in front and back. You, and you, had a, you had a literal Wonder Years situation going on. 14, 15 year old kid, me and my brother, you know, yeah. we're, we were having our own. Uh, what was that other show that we we, we vetoed with the hormone monster? Ah, uh, yes, the yeah, that, was, that is that is pure adolescent time for sure. We we yeah we had our, that was that was a situation back then. All right, I heard, I heard she was like a math whiz and uh, was yeah. very very bright. Apparently, she was going to, to UCLA. She was sweet, nice, nice. Yeah, 
uh, I also went to high school with uh, Anastasia Horn, who who was like like a, a, a pretty young girl on uh, what was that show? Oh my god, uh, I don't know. It was a Disney show. I want to say the Electric Company, but that that wasn't it. What was like Kids Incorporated? Nothing. Not ringing any bells. Is that the one that like? Uh... Britney Spears was on and Justin Timberlake and all of those. They were no, they were in the Mickey Mouse Club. Kids Incorporated. K I D S. Yeah, Kids Incorporated. I, was, I wasn't really a Disney Channel kid. See, and and they were like on that show when I was the same age. And then when I got to high school, Anastasia Horn man was in the choir with me. That's a whole other thing too. All right, moving on. Uh, I'm ready when you are. So this show is about like uh, a, a, a family of fast food characters. So like it's a French mm. fat man and a meatball and a giant shake. And they're literally, they're crime fighters too. But they never really fight crime. They just literally get into wacky misadventures. Okay. Nonsense. Nonstop nonsense. And and random characters just showing up. Maybe some aliens that look like jigsaw pieces and uh, vampires. Why not? And then, uh, you know, if, if, if you can imagine it, it's going to be happening. Uh, Danzig, Jeff Danzig is going to show up. And, uh, and they're just, you know. Sounds like a stoner show. I mean. Anthropomorphized french fries and. If we're, if, we're talking, if we're talking cartoon misadventures for adults, they're generally going to be stoner shows or at least attract a stoner audience. So you, True. You got to accept that. But you also said they were crime fighters that never fought crime. That's part of the joke. That's that's kind of the joke. Like, like the intro is going to be like, oh, these guys are crime fighters. But no, they're just sort of, they have this like regular wacky hijinks happening to them all the time, they can never really get to the crime fighting. Like, like name name a wacky hijink. Okay, like uh, they're gonna get abducted and go to space, or or maybe uh, their their next door neighbor, Carl, is going to get uh, an above ground swimming pool, and they're gonna decide to fill it with something that's not water, and uh, you know it's it's gonna become a problem. Or maybe some giant bugs are gonna show up or something like that. But they can all talk and everything, you know. There's always going to be a twist and a spin on everything. It's it's pure comedy. Everything is comedy. Played for the long. Are time. are all the jokes related to them being food products? None of them. We're actually never really going to spend too much time considering the fact that they're food or why. Okay, I I like it, and the fact that they're that they're food means that um, you know they're not going to be too serious. Uh, they live in a world where things can happen, like giant puzzle pieces and bugs can come from space. That's right. Okay, I get it. It sounds like there's a lot, and they can always fall back on crime fighting. So That's I, I like, I like this one. This, this is, this is a wacky, fun show, and I want to pick this one now. Oh, All right. Hang on. Yeah. Now let me ask you: Have you ever seen any Aqua Teen Hunger Force episodes? Yeah, I watched an, like an episode or two. It's okay, it, you know. I don't think it's really your bag. That's yeah, not I'm not. I'm not a stoner. Right. But if, if I smoke more weed, I think I'd oh. be right up that up. But oh. it's good potential. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, like, I'm, is it Meatwad? Is that the name of the character? Like, you know, it's like hey, like a funny voice and funny you know, voice. A, wacky, wacky things happen. And I dig it. All right, that's it. You got it. Yeah. Okay, let's keep this train rolling. All right. Okay, so this guy is kind of like similar to The Simpsons where it's going to focus on a family, all right? But with this family, same thing, overweight dad, stay-at-home mom, uh, daughter, baby, son. The baby's really smart, though, like really, really smart. And they have a talking dog that like hangs out with the baby and they can go on their own adventures. There's going to be a pervert neighbor. There's going to be a, a black neighbor and a black family. There's going to be a, a handicapped neighbor in a wheelchair with a pregnant wife who just stays pregnant. Um, that's it. Oh, okay. Uh, the pervert neighbor's dad is going to be transgender and the mayor is going to be Adam West. All right. Until he dies. All right. 
The only two funny things I heard in there is a neighbor that is pregnant that just stays pregnant uh, inexplicably. Yeah. And uh, Adam West is the mayor. Okay. Walla Walla's own Adam West. Mm -hmm. it's but the rest wow. of it, meh. Yeah, it, it, it's it's just it's Maybe. it's kind of the Simpsons, and yeah, and, but I love Family Guy, but the premise sucks. Yeah, and not just that. The irony is, it's the Simpsons kind of rebooted on the same channel that the Simpsons is on. Well, you you, you kind of miss the whole point of Family Guy, though. As somebody who has seen it and knows Family Guy, is uh the cutaways. Oh, I told totally you where all the comedy comes from for the most part. Forgot, didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, that's that's kind of the the differentiator. They're they're the they're the, the kings of cutaways. Okay, but if that's like literally their thing, and that's like the whole show's it factor, that's weak, man. If like, yeah, but, like I remember the very first episode is is uh, like one like I remember the first time I watched and and it really caught. I think it was the first episode, and or at least it's the funny part. Where they said, you know, they got a million dollars or something. They're like, ah, oh, Peter, you know, it gets crazy. And he's like, I built a moat. And he's like, Peter, do we really need a moat? And they're like, well, maybe not, but it keeps the Black Knight at bay. And it just shows the Black Knight like running around the moat. Like, why would the Black Knight be in a residential neighborhood? That's just wacky and funny. Mm -hmm. Random I, occurrence, the Black Knight would just be there and it keeps him at bay. I'm, it's just I'm, funny. I like it has nothing to do with the plot. It's just funny. I'm big on on absurd comedy. Like yeah, that's absurd. Right that's right up my alley. Is, 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 but I'm you didn't mention any of that, so we're passing. Fine. All right. Move, Move. Moving on. Okay. This is a, a talk show, but it's a talk show that's being hosted by uh, a, a, a peripheral character from the Hanna-Barbera cartoon universe. And there's going to be other peripheral Hanna-Barbera cartoon characters that are just showing up throughout the show. Maybe one is like working as a stagehand. Maybe one is like the co-host. They work in the building. One's like a drug dealer, hippopotamus. Uh, but the thing is, they're interviewing actual real-life celebrities via TV monitor. So you'll see the real celebrity as he's getting interviewed. But instead of seeing uh, whoever was actually interviewing him, you'll see the cartoon host as it goes happening live. Okay, so this is a blending of cartoon and real life. Yeah. Oh. Are the Hanna Barbera characters being straight, or are they funny themselves? They're all ridiculous. Okay, they're all so they're wa they're wacky and thing. So, but is it just an interview show? Essentially, essentially, it's like uh, just supposed to be like a late night show. And, and here's the thing: it's only. But, like it, but are they just straight interviews, or are they doing bits? Wacky. Like, are they are they are they scripted or unscripted interviews? Unscripted, wacky interviews. Mm. And it's only like fifteen minutes. But but it's going to rely on the celebrity or whatever being funny, or the celebrity being shocked by the 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 absurdity and wackiness of the situation they're in. But if they were shocked, why would any celebrity come on there unless they were? They book the gig, man. To to you know, they do it for the brand. Get their name out there, different audience. Open them up for for a different audience. You sure it's not scripted? If it was scripted, I might, I might be in. I don't think so. I mean, they might know a little bit of what they're getting into, but uh, they, they definitely felt like when they're being interviewed, sometimes they got caught off guard by some of the questions they were being asked. Uh, yeah. If it were, I, I I think I got a pass because most celebrities, I like if if they were interviewing comedians only. Okay, yeah. Because comedians know how to be funny, but like if you're going to interview Brad Pitt on there, he's not like he can act in a funny way, but he's not funny. Uh huh. He's not a comedian. All right, then fine. All right, then fine. All right. It, it sounds great, and I believe you're talking about Space Ghost, and I like Space Ghost. Yeah, Space Ghost. Because uh, I mean, there, there's oh, like there, there's like a you know like the songs like uh, is it Brack has all the songs. I love that. Yeah, Brack, Brack was like the uh, the band leader, I guess you could say. It seems to me there's a lot of funny bits that happen there. There were some bits, some 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 bits that were involved. Sure, you didn't tell me about any of those. Yeah, because I forgot about the old ones. Yeah, I, I got a pass. All right, then fine. I, I got a pass, but you know what? That one's your fault. And you know, all right, here we go. So 
You said you liked that uh, that Brat character. What if we gave him his own show? What if when he left work, he goes home and we see what what his life is like? And it's just like you know, you just got a totally normal wife, but uh, everything else is kind of going on. It's kind of crazy, and that's it. That's 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 all I got for that. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop the timer here. And uh, that's a movie. It's not a show. The Brack Show. It's not a movie. I, I'm saying that's not enough material for for a show. It should be a movie. A movie? I'd watch it. I'd be like, oh, Black Brack is crazy. Let's yeah. get, give him a wacky adventure. And but I don't want to see that every day. Brack don't clack. Right. He's a cucumber. Please don't take him to the pickle farm. Huh. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna sit on that one. You don't know that song? No. I'm a cucumber. 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 Please don't take me to the pickle bar ball. Really? All right. Well, thank you. Now we know. Now we know. All right. Uh Okay, this is another family, and they're somewhere in, like, New York, and they don't have a lot of money. But what they do have is their own hamburger restaurant, like a mom-and-pop's operation. And, and they, make, they make hamburgers with their kids, three kids, a little girl. And a little girl, she's going to wear a pink hat with bunny ears. Why? Why not? She likes it, okay? She's the youngest, and... Uh, and they're just, you know, the kids go to school. They have their little kid friends. And they're hanging out at the school. And, and the mom and dad are pretty much making burgers. And they got their regulars. They got their regulars. They're paying their bills. They're just trying to live their life. Kind of think of a... So it's a family that's trying to live their life. Pass. Okay. All right, that's fair. This is like the fifth. And by the way, all of these shows are the most... The most popular and successful shows that are on TV. Yeah. It's just a family trying to live their life. It's all of those shows, The Simpsons, Family Guy, and Bob's Burgers are all families with three kids just living their life. And, and, and you know what I think it is, too? I think it really comes down to who you have attached. So, like, if I just knew off the top of my head, I could just start naming off the celebrities that, that are they're voiced by. Maybe that would do it. But I'm trying to sell you on a concept of a show because... As a viewer, you almost believe, like, I don't really know what uh, the woman voicing Lisa Simpson looks like. That's Lisa. Lisa Smith? She was on a ton of stuff in the 90s. I don't know. That's that's Lisa Simpson to me. Or or, or or like the woman voicing Bart. You know, I don't really know what she looks like. But, but with a lot of these other shows, it really comes down to who the talent is. But all right. I got another one for you. You never saw, you never saw Darman, Greg, or... Or any of those other shows? Yearly issue on Herman's Head. Remember Herman's Head from the nineties? Yeah, yeah. No. What about on that? Who? Yearly Smith. That's Bart. No, Lisa. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, right. are you ready? Yeah. So this is another family just trying to live their life, but this. Uh, time, no, no, no. But this time they're in Texas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This guy, this guy is just a hard. You know who we're gonna do? Who we're gonna make the main character? The neighbor from Beavis and Butthead. We're gonna okay. make him better now. Okay. And then uh, he's got his buddy. They're just drinking. They just they drink a lot. They drink in the alley. They hang out. They shoot the shit. They talk about Texas things. He's real conservative. He, he sells he sells propane and propane accessories. Uh, his wife Peggy. Okay, they're uh, he's no Texas baby. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pass on it. Like, where, where's the conflict? Like, we talk about Texas things, great. All right, fine. Come on, man. All right, fine. Now, I do like that he sells propane and propane accessories. Yeah, that's that's good. I, that's funny. Hey, you know, he in fact, he can walk around saying, I sell propane and propane accessories. Yeah, that's funny. Can. He can also go, what the hell? You know, that's all forget about. Right. He could say that, maybe. He could say that. He can if, say he, that. if he said that boy ain't right all the time, that'd be funny. That boy ain't right. He has a funny affliction. Affection? A affliction. Oh, Bobby. <laughs> you the boy. And, and, and maybe if he had. 
Yeah, and may, maybe if his he had very very narrow and thin padding on his butt, that could be funny. Right, and then narrow your urethra. And then narrow your urethra. You sure? You're okay. Well, we already, you're, already, you're, already none of them was in the pitch, so I have no idea that that even exists. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, here, here, here's the next one. Okay, this is a show about Hollywood. But what we're going to do to make this stand apart from all the other shows, especially about Hollywood, is we're going to make it featuring animals. So our main character is going to be a horse, and he's going to have been really popular in the 90s. And this is about where he's at now in his career as an aging actor. He's going to have a substance abuse problem. His, his friend is going to be a golden retriever that's just really like optimistic, voiced by Paul F. Tompkins. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have Aaron Paul being his, 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 his roommate, this sort of slacker kid that stays on his couch, but always fails upwards. We're going to have his agent be a little cat. Okay. And she just wants to work really hard. Can the dog be called Mr. Peanut Butter? If you want, sure. It can be any, uh, any of the nut butters of your choosing. I, I do love Paula Tompkins. Mm -hmm. My favorite comedians. Uh, is the show just about like the horse and his substance abuse problem? No, that In doesn't fact, sound fun. No, it's it's going to be about Hollywood, and honestly, it's going to be super, super realistic. Like if you're out here, whether you're in the industry or just trying to get into the industry, you're going to see constant references to things that are really here, locations, stuff that's like super inside baseball, apartment complexes, condos, like like side streets this and that that if you are like out here doing it you're like whoa this is really kind of realistic and the storylines happening are going to be very true to the hollywood experience uh more so than anything that's ever been put out there and here's the thing it's going to be really funny it's going to be really funny. None, none of that interests me but being in like set in hollywood is it like kind of looking at the absurdity of the situation in, in the industry absolutely Kind of poking fun at okay because there, there's a lot there and anthropomorphic animals you know i love anthropomorphic animals who doesn't and yeah you know i i think you might have told me like it's, it's a gold mine it's a treasure trove of wacky hijinks because everybody's terrible yeah and you could just play on how terrible everybody is and getting into these terrible situations and being terrible That's right. and you could just it could basically just be an absurdist romp through uh, uh, Animal Hollywood. It's a fact. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sign right. me up. All right. I feel, I feel good about that. I actually, if you if you noticed, I had a little more information on that one than some of, some of the other pitches. I literally just finished the final episode of uh, BoJack Horseman. Today. Is it done now? Yeah. How many seasons did they do? Six, maybe, or five. Okay. It took a while. We, yeah, we watched the first season, maybe season and a half, something like that. It's funny. Oh, yeah. My, my wife liked it, too. It's, it's funny. I, I think it was great, and, and it evolves as a show. And, and something I like about it is it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It tells a story, and it wraps itself up. It knows when it's done. And it's not like, you know, The Simpsons, one of these shows that just, like, are going on forever. Honestly, The Simpsons should be off the air now. I, I wish Futurama. I disagree. It's still funny. Yeah, I wish Futurama took its spot years. Have, ago. have you have you seen The Simpsons? Yeah, I watch all that. I watch all. I watch all the. No, you know, it's good. It's good because they take a year on every episode. It's still funny. It's quality stuff. No, it's it's good. But I'm saying, it's told its story. Uh, I don't think everything has more legs. If we're we're saying Family Guy, and. Uh, um, the Simpsons were were really really kind of the same thing, just a different way to do it, you know. Just just give me something new. I think, but the, but the comedy is different. This, this is comedy. We're not, we're not talking about we're not talking about noble premises. Mm -hmm. We're talking about just being funny, just presenting things in a funny manner. That's all you need. Well, this isn't right. high art. No, it's funny comedy. All right, fair enough. Which one could argue is also high art. Oh, okay. I see what you did there. Okay, this show is about like a CIA man, and he's like very uh, hardcore right Republican, gun-toting, America first, you know, loves his country. 
uh, steak and potatoes. He's got kind of like a super hot kind of bimbo blonde wife. She's like, seems kind of ditzy, honestly. And she doesn't care because her man is a manly man. And they got two kids. The daughter's kind of a hippie. And the son is just sort of like kind of a nerd. But here's the thing. An alien lives with them that gets into wacky adventures. They have a little talking goldfish that lives with them too, named Klaus. That's actually like a, a, a spy, a German spy, put into the fish's body. Um, All right. So instead of having three kids and a dog, they have two kids, an alien, and a fish. But yes. it's still a nuclear family. Yes. And it's actually by the same person that makes that other show you're thinking of. That's it's all nuclear families. Yeah. Nuclear families are very eighties and I want no part of that in my TPM Sunday night lineup. All right. You, you, you know, it's so oh. Barb, we're just talking about nuclear families, the lifestyle that, um, kind of propagated in these shows with the, the single, the single income, and the stay-at-home mom with three kids is not possible anymore. These are homeowners paying a mortgage, supposedly in a middle-class job or setting, uh, that, that are, are paying a mortgage and raising three kids. You can't do that. Well, you absolutely can. You just can't do it where you live. Okay, but you think in, in Ohio, if <laughs> in Ohio, if you work at the uh, nuclear nuclear power plant, you, you can pay for a house and three kids? Yeah, that's that's what most people do here, where I live. They work at the- you, get, you know, yeah, you get a decent paying job at the, you know, in one of the one of the higher paying areas, work for the government or, you know, at the prison or, or you know, for the technology company and- That's it, you make it work. Yeah. All that's right, all you man. need. All right, man. Uh, okay. So this one takes place in the future. And I'm talking about like maybe the year 3000, like way out there. We're going way out there now. Aliens uh, are, are intermingling with the people. All the technology is created. Space travel is nothing, okay? Uh, transporters, hamster tubes. People are shooting through tubes. Um, it's gonna be about a one-eyed Cyclops woman working at like a package delivering facility with, with a guy, our main character has actually gonna get transported from present day to that future because he fell into a cryogenic freezing machine. And there's gonna be a robot that's gonna be his friend, like a wacky robot that's got like real people emotions and they'll have like a little monster. It's almost like a dog, but it's an alien and it eats anything. It'll eat literally, like it'll eat a Volkswagen. All right. So, see, now we're talking about a real premise here. So far, we've got a lot of, uh, well, you know, it's kind of a fam. This is a guy transported from the past into the distant future where everything is totally different. And there's robots and aliens and cyclopses and, and eating aliens, people travel in tubes. That's all. Okay. So I assume, I assume the plot is he is adjusting to the future this wacky future. Is that accurate? I think that he's adjusting to it. I think he likes it. I think he, he's kind of like a simple, a simple, like every man. And I think he just sort of like falls into it and just like accepts it. You know, I, he really likes the robot, him and the robot become like best friends and, and get, they're both like hard drinking party guys. So is this like a better version of idiocracy? Yes. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. That sounds great. You like that better than uh than animals running Hollywood? Yes, because when you're in the future, you could do crazy like like you can have a robot best friend, and the robot has his own problems because he's a robot, so he has robot problems. Mm -hmm. And then the Cyclops has their own problems because they always have bad depth perception. Whoa! Or you know, the alien is wacky and he eats crazy stuff. And oh, isn't that crazy? There you go. It's wacky. I like wacky hijinks. Boom. All right. All right. Well, well you can't you can't really argue with that. Futurama, I don't think ever really got a fair shake. I think Futurama should have took the Simpsons spot. Oh, that's not true. It was on for like 12 seasons or something, wasn't it? It was on forever. Whatever it was. Seasons. Whatever it was. No. 
Whatever, ask, ask our producer, how long did Futurama air? It was more than 10, definitely. I bet less. How many seasons did Futurama run? Futurama has seven seasons. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, seven seasons. That not really surprises me. Not well, you're right. It didn't get a fair shake then. No, but Simpsons is on like its 30th season. Yeah, but Simpsons has a big world that they can live in that Futurama, I don't yeah. know. I, look, I, I was I was all for it. I love Futurama; it's great. But uh, but at least they got to have a final episode. Futurama Futurama should should uh, make new episodes on like Hulu or Netflix or one. They of did. They they made them on Comedy Central for a season or two, and nobody watched. I'm, I'm not down here. Okay. Well, I'm ready when you are. Okay. So this show takes place in like um like fairy tale land okay like in a castle it's like medieval time and and, and in this medieval castle there's a king who, who obviously runs his kingdom and he's kind of just like a like, kind of like a grouch you know he, he's just sort of like that's it he's just sort of like a a big grouchy guy but this show is about his daughter his daughter and 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 she has two friends one is a demon she hangs out with a little demon but the demon is like the size of like a small dog, and it's going to be voiced by Eric Andre. And uh, uh, no, uh, that's the end of that. A no, uh, I like Eric Andre. And a no, um, this is an odd show. It sounds okay. I don't mind. It's 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 creative and and uh, you know uh, ripe for hijinks, I suppose. Um. Yeah, it's not going to be better than past guy in the future. What if I told you it was going to be created by the same people? It's a Matt Groening show. Is it really? What, what show is this? Disenchantment on Netflix. Huh. Never heard of it, but I might check it out. Yeah. Not as good as the future guy. I agree. See, I wish I wish he was doing Futurama on Netflix instead of Disenchantment. Yeah. But you know what I think it is, too? Seven seasons. That's crazy. I could have... I, there's there's so many good episodes. You just assume that they were a ton of them. I, I think I think he probably you know wanted to do some different things himself, but it's very possible. Okay, this is our last one. Oh, thank God! The last one was our penultimate. This is the last one. Here we go. Okay, for our, my final pitch to you, it's about a heavy metal rock band, but they're like literally like in cahoots with like the devil. Not even on purpose. They just like bring chaos and like gore and tragedy and violence to wherever they go and their fan bases and stuff. And it's like going to to, to bring like the apocalypse through their hardcore thrash heavy metal music. You may see to yourself that's not funny, and you would be wrong because there's a clown. There's also a clown. All right. There you go. Oh, <laughs> right, right on cue. There's a clown. Is, isn't it? Oh, come on, man. There's a clown. That's right. Is the clown the only source of comedy? It's it's just like super dark. Like you're laughing at the fact that things it's, are it's dark comedy. comedy. Yeah, it's just dark comedy. All right, yeah, I, I, I get it, but uh, you know what I like? Light comedy? I've told you a thousand times. Wacky misadventures? Wacky misadventures and hijinks. And hijinks. This does not sound like wacky misadventures or hijinks. It sounds like uh, like dark comedy with a dark clown. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, there, there's more of that than there are hijinks. There are some what, hijinks. What, what show is this? Metalocalypse. Huh. You ever heard of it? I know the name. Do they have, do they, are they an actual band? Uh, uh, they prefer, yeah, they have an actual band. Like they're like an actual people. They have like actual songs, right? Death Clock. Death Clock. Okay. Uh, um, ask our producer to play Death Clock Titty Fish. No, I, I, I saw Death Clock live. It's, they're, they're, they're fine. Okay, but just play Titty Fish for the sake of our audience. Death Clock. Oh. Titty fish. We're, we're, our tight 45 has stretched into a tight 100 and uh, 
uh, or what, what would that be? Uh, a tight 90. Okay. We'll, we'll stop right now, but I'm just telling you, we'll, we'll bang through the noodles. Tight 75. That's okay. What you don't want, you don't want to hear, you don't want to hear titty fish. You can live the rest of your life without hearing death clock titty fish. Uh, right. yeah. Okay. Well, every, everyone perps, you would, right. Stop watching this show and go, go to YouTube and, 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 and search for, for death clock titty fish. That's a quality song. You're missing out. All right. So uh, are you ready to crown your champion? Uh, let's see. Is titty fish an option? Ah, then it's got to be the future guy, the past guy, going to the future with wacky aliens and robot best friend. There you go. You know, you know what, you know what, uh, what show I did not hear. Should I pitch it to you? Do you want to? After yeah. I, I, do we yeah. not have a winner? I, I well, I don't, no, we we have a winner. Well, I want to pitch you because th this is one of the shows that I thought would have a chance. This is an audible? You're calling it an audible? No, I, I, I just want to pitch it to you, and you tell me what you think. I'll okay. tell you what, because I I gave my vote for a winner. Well, we have we have one, and this will be the, and then you can decide who's the ultimate winner. All right, all right, let's do this then. Okay, so you got forty seconds on the clock. All right, hold on. Let me tell you when to start going now. Yeah, ready? Okay. Picture the Warner Brothers Studios. There were three characters that were created that were so bad, so wacky, so off the wall, and so disruptive that they had to be stored in the Water Brothers water tower. Mm -hmm. But one day, the water tower opened and they got out. And with them became all of these crazy, wacky hijinks. They went through all the studios and started unleashing all these wacky characters and, and overturning things and just creating uh, mass chaos and confusion and fun and hijinks and misadventures and they run through and they're always being chased and then they they pop up in other cartoons and pop out of other cartoons and they have friends that come with them and they and they they have a, a two rats that want to take over the world because they're smart rats because they sip some ooze or something to that effect and they want to take over the world and they ask what do you want to do tonight he says same thing we do overnight try to take over the world okay all right. Um, what are they? What are they again? They're just like, what kind of animals? Cartoon are characters? Are they dogs or like? No, they're just animals. Cartoon animals. They're like part mouse, part dog. Are are are? They're they're, they're kind of Mickey Mouse ish. Okay. With long with long ears. Okay. Long so, rabbit ears. So it's like mocking mocking the Disney. It's kind of mocking Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Loosely, perhaps. Okay. Um, is it funny? Yeah, wacky hijinks everywhere. They they pop up. It's it's slapstick absurdist. Is it's, it for? Uh, is it for adults? Yeah. In fact, it just got re-released for adults. Okay. Okay. So that or the future. Oh, I, I think I still got to go with, with the future and the robots. Oh, no, hang on. I think we can call the show Future Man. Because Future Man brews on the inside. Future <laughs> Man can't feel no feelings. <laughs> brews on the inside. All right, you're fine. Yeah. Hey, Animaniacs is a good show, but uh, that's the best. So that's the greatest doodle of all time. That's a pretty impressive. The greatest doodle of all time. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We are the Determinators, the Perpendicular Mouse. Perpendicular Mouse.